Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 13 of the new Builder Stash and Craft. Today we're going to make marbled paper and we're going to do it with our own little handmade dies that we made with an Easter egg kit. Now, I didn't do this in front of you because you kind of have to wait for the little tablets to melt and I thought about doing it but I thought that's kind of a waste of time. So all I did was I filled my bottles approximately half full with um, some warm water just out of the tap and and then I just put one of the color tablets in each one. If you want it to be not as dark, you can add more water. If you want it to be darker, you can add less water or get two of the kits and add two tablets to each one to make it darker. So um, I took the box apart and there was just a couple of things. We've got these little circles now that we can use for something. And I was looking at the box when I was reading the directions and everything, and these little circles have a little um, hole in the middle. And with that hole, because it didn't say anything, and I remember when I was a kid, this was part. This was one of the fun parts. You just take a toothpick or one of your skewers or whatever and just poke it through that hole. And if you're using a skewer, you would need to, you know, cut it off. But it makes a top. So it's this is too top heavy to do it. But yeah, it's really fun for the kids to just be able to spin those tops. So, But also, they make great little masks, or we can use them to make buttons or all sorts of things. So keep those little um, circles. They're already cut for you and everything. And then there's some little stickers that we can use. And there are these little cardboard strips that can be used. So keep those things in your stash because you never know when you might just want a little something. And then... Also keep the back of the box where you punch the circles out of because this makes a great stencil. And you can always even use this for something. So go ahead and keep that around too. So to start with, um, let's add a couple crumbs on there or something. To start with, we're just going to take our pan and we're going to put shaving cream in it. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Whew, I thought I wasn't going to be able to get the top off. Now, shaving cream, make sure you shake it good. It has to be the foam type shaving cream. But when you spray it into your pan, um, it kind of starts to grow a little bit. So, And you don't need a ton. So just go ahead and put in enough that it will just cover the bottom of your pan. And then, oh, I had a piece of cardboard out here. What did I do with it? Well, um, just grab our little Easter egg kit. We're going to need something to just spread that out. We're also going to need something um, to take the shaving cream off of our foam. So you just are going to need something, a piece of acetate would work. Anything that has just a flat edge. And um, I just don't want to cut this over the shaving cream. I'm just cutting up our box here. Um, anything with a flat, straight edge is you know all you need so i'm just going to cut all the flaps off of this there and then i'm going to fold it in half make it a little bit sturdier and easier to hang on to give it a nice burnish and it it really cracked quite a bit so i think i'm just going to cut those little i'm just going to trim that it's my fold, so I need to make sure I don't cut my fold, but I just want those little extra bits off so that I have a flat edge. There we go. I just kind of shaved them off a little bit. And then you're just going to take your flat, whatever it is, and we're just going to spread the shaving cream around on the pan. And it only really needs to be, it doesn't have to be even as big as your pan, it needs to be as big as your paper. So that even might be something that you wanna remember because I like have enough here to fill up this pan almost. But if you're filling up the pan, how big is your paper? You really don't need to um, put any color anywhere where your paper's not going to touch it. Okay, so there we go. Now I just have a nice, fairly smooth surface to start with. Just wipe your cardboard off on the edge. And move this so you can see the whole thing. Can you? Yeah, okay. So, and then we're just going to choose a couple colors. We'll start with lighter colors. Um, so we're gonna do some yellow. Give it just a little bit of a 
a shake and then whoops I squeeze the bottle a little too hard you can even just maybe give it a shake and let it drip out and then let's put some make sure you close your tops the other thing is if you want to I don't normally do this but I'm trying to get ahead on videos because I may need to go to our daughters in Oklahoma for a couple weeks and so I'm trying to make sure that I've got enough videos to come out while I'm gone so um I think I will put our gloves on and just a quick note if your hands get sweaty inside the gloves and you are having a hard time getting them off or if you when you wash them because if you just wash your hands like you regularly do with your gloves on it'll clean your gloves off and you can keep them but if it gets stuck just pull out right here blow into your glove it'll blow the whole thing up and that way you'll be able to take it off so we'll do yellow and orange just kind of give it a shake okay shut it up and then just take one of your skewers and just kind of mix those colors together until you have a pattern that you like I like to go like one way like this and then turn around and up here I really didn't get any so I'm just gonna kind of come back in and do a little bit more right there and then I'm gonna go the other way just because I like the way that that looks. It gives you that feathered texture. And just play around with the, your colors as you're doing them um, and learn just different ways to go ahead and, and mix those up. Now, because we've got the white shaving cream underneath, the only thing that's going to show up is going to be just where the color is. So anywhere where there's no color, um, on the shaving cream it's going to stay white but by the time you start getting through this um, and maybe mix the colors so much you'll wind up with kind of a backing color because your shaving cream will start turning colors now a lot of times your shaving cream might stick this really didn't stick at all but if it sticks all you do is you just go in and use your flat um, little thing here I don't really want all that shaving cream on there because the whole purpose of what we're doing right now is to take the shaving cream off your paper. So if you've got a whole bunch of shaving cream on there and it's like, oh, that looks really cool, I'm afraid to wipe it off. Don't be afraid to wipe it off. Just take your flat side and just wipe the shaving cream off. You'll be surprised that color will stay exactly the way your pattern was after you wipe it off. So there is our first marbled piece and I think that that looks pretty. And this is such a quick way and it's such a fun way um, you know to make projects now you can try and pick it up again um, because that color is still there so I could take one of our dictionary pages and see what we get for that now you want to pat it to make sure or give it a very light rub to make sure that your paper touches everywhere if there's a like a bubble underneath there where your paper doesn't touch then obviously it will not pick up the the ink that's in that area so you want to just make sure but you don't want to push super hard you don't want to squash that out from underneath of there and I know that the dictionary pages when I dyed them it took a little while for them to even get any color they didn't pick up the color as well so I'm kind of letting it be on there for a few minutes before I pick it up and then just pick it up from one of your corners now see there's quite a bit of shaving cream still left on there so just set it down and scrape that shaving cream off and there we go now we have marbled so you can see just how marbled it is there on the edge but now we have marbled dictionary page which also is really pretty now we can maybe just add a color let's you know we could mix this all together and then we would have a light yellowish orange background but let's just add another color let's put in some pink and I whoops and whatever color you put on last is going to be the darkest color on your paper because there's more ink there and it is you know it's on the top of everything else and then and you could even take like two skewers and kind of put them next to each other and let's maybe just try and go like this 
and then go like this. Okay, and try another piece. And again, just smooth it out on there, making sure that it touches your shaving cream everywhere. And you can see it come through. This also makes for um, some pretty kind of double-sided paper because that color comes through and winds up being on both sides. So right here, I can see that I'm really not hardly touching because I'm just getting a few speckles of color. So I'm just going to make sure that I smooth that down a little bit. Right here, I'm not getting any color, and that's very possibly because there is no color there. So there we go. That should be good enough. I'll just grab a corner and pick that up. And even though there's not a lot of shaving cream on it, I still want to take that shaving cream off because I don't want it to dry on my paper. But look at how pretty that turned out. So you can get so many really pretty designs, and the back side will, as it dries, um, get a little darker than it is here, but not as dark as on the front side. Oops, I think I just stuck my, yep, I did. I stuck my jacket in the shaving cream. Okay, so, and then let's do, what color is not going to be terrible? Let's do a red. And so with the red, I want to actually try and get like a, oh, I washed these because these are the ones we had the Kool-Aid in and a drop of water came out. So I want a drip of red in some different places. And like I said, just play around with it and see what kind of designs that you get that you like. So with that, we can go ahead and make, just start in the center and make a little starburst. And as you as you go in the center and pull this out, the center gets dented down. So when you put it on your paper, a lot of times the center turns out white because your paper does not touch that center piece. And now I am really, um, I've got so much foam on my skewer that it is taking, it's moving all the color away. And wherever that moves the color away, it's going to be white on your paper. But that might be really kind of neat, so I'm gonna do a few like that. And then maybe I'll wipe this off and... And this time I'm wiping it each time. All right, so let's see what that looks like. And that is the most fun about doing this paper. See, now I have colored shaving foam on my hands, so when I picked it up, I got a little bit of color on the back there. Which marbled paper doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. So you just go ahead and just play with it. Now I can tell right here I'm not touching the shaving cream, so I want to Push it down there to maybe pick up some color in that spot. And you can already see how these are going to be white in the middle. Where we pulled that shaving cream, or we pulled the color away. And there we go. Take that one off and see what it looks like. That is really pretty. And I like them both ways. I like them with the white center and I like them with the colored center. And there is that one. And the more you do, the fuller your paper gets with color. And when you get to the point where you say, okay, I'm kind of like, I'm done with this. I'm done with these colors. Um, or I want more of a solid background. And you can start right out with a solid background by mixing your foam with some color to, to give you a background. But so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mix this together. I was doing it to get a solid color background. 
but first I like the looks of that. Now that's very um, layered, so I'm going to actually have to really push the, I'm going to have to push the paper down on that to get that look to smooth out that shaving cream. But I wasn't planning on doing this, but as I was stirring it, I thought I like the way that looks. So now we're going to make a piece of paper like that. And sometimes you may think that something's going to turn out one way and it doesn't. Turns out better or turns out not, you know, not as good as you kind of had hoped. But they're always usable for something, even if it's just a background snippet. This piece, wow, look at that piece. That piece is really awesome. And that was when we were just going to mix our colors. So that's very cool. All right, so now I really am going to mix my colors up in here. And I'm doing this so that we have pretty much a solid color background. Now, I'm not going to mix it so, so well that it's perfectly the same color. But I really don't want the real dark spots or blobs or swirls of these colors because I'm going to go to a new color. And maybe do a few shapes or something. So I, I want this to just be a nice blended background. Take some red yellow from out there. And something, I do apologize if that scratching bothers you. Um, but you can find something, I'm sure, to maybe mix it better quicker. Like even a spoon or something might work well to get this all stirred up instead of these little tiny skewers. Okay. So that pretty much, and I'm, I'm kind of want to make sure that I don't care if I have white way around the edges, but I didn't want any white coming way into my paper. And I'm just going to use my flat spatula to smooth it back down and give me a nice flat surface to start with again. And these are all just like quick suggestions so that the video's not 5 million hours long. But you can play with this for a really long time, getting lots of different, coming up with lots of different shapes and patterns. And if you have a place where there's a big hole in your in your foam that will come out white on your paper so you'll want to try and cover that up i kind of want to make sure it's as big as my paper and about the same level all right so i'm going to call this good all right so now let's let's do the blue and I'm going to try and do a feather. So I, I have done a feather before. So I'm just going to put some blue kind of in a line. And then use my skewer to bring it out to a point. Maybe two skewers would be better. And I don't want any of that. I don't want the foam on there. So there we go. And now I'm just going to take that color and fan it out. I'm going to wipe it off each time so that I don't make too big of a hole in my blue coloring. Because the more foam that's on here, the more it wipes away. Which is another good reason to have gloves on when you're doing this one if you're going to play with your colors like this. So, and then I can because I've moved all of that color out of the middle. Um, that was kind of silly. I just smeared it all over my gloves. But what I could do is I could take this color 
and kind of put that back in there. To get that, to get the foam there lifted up so that my paper will touch it. Because if it's too deep, my paper's not going to touch it. I can also press a little bit harder. I'm going to try this one on a dictionary page. And hopefully, it will pick the color up. And I'm kind of pressing in the center. I can feel where that center is. So I'm kind of pressing down a little bit. I don't want to smooth this a whole lot because I don't want to move those lines. But I do just kind of want to make sure that wherever I made a big dent, I want to make sure my paper's kind of going down in that area to pick it up. Alrighty, so I can kind of see the outline of my feather here. Which means that it's at least on the other side because it's starting to soak through. So we're going to take this off and see what it looks like. And you're not supposed to do that with your gloves. You're just supposed to take this and wipe it on the edge of your pan. And now this is starting to get quite wet. So it's not working as well to... There we go. That's much better. And so here we go. So there is our feather. And it's hard to see on this color. Um, but you, this is going to be kind of peach around the edge when the paper dries. But because the paper's already cream colored, it doesn't show up as much as it would if I had done it with white. So let's see if we can pick up another print with the white. And again, I am going to kind of press down in the center of that feather. And then I'm going to press down out here so that it picks up that pinkish color out that way. You can kind of see that your paper's starting to get a little bit wet. When you've got light colors, it's hard to know if you've picked them up. But if you can see that your paper is starting to, to get wet, then you know that whatever was under there has touched the paper. You'll know the shaving cream with whatever color it has on it has touched the paper. See here, my paper is totally dry. So maybe if I try and press down there a little bit, I might get something. Because it's not just white, because there's no color in the shaving cream, it's dry. But it doesn't want to pick that up, so let's take this off. And so see, with this one, you can see that the color is peach behind that feather. And again, these are quick. You can really play with these to get different designs. You know, I could have maybe tried to, to put a little blue here for the vein or whatever you call that of the feather. I could have filled it in more. You know, you can do, I could put another color in there. So there's so many things you can do. Another fun one is swirls. And that's not very big, so... Let's pick it up with the dictionary page. And again, because this doesn't soak it up as fast, has to sit just a little bit longer. And take that shaving cream off of there. And so there we go. It doesn't show up much. It doesn't really do much for me, but there's a little color on that paper now, which I just might need at some point in time. So you can also just put a drop of your color. Whoops. There we go. And then... To a swirl. And actually, I'm going to not wipe this off. It's such a habit to wipe it off because I think that having that on there 
makes my skewer just a little wider and helps pull that color with it. And leave a little bit of, whoops. Can you see? And then maybe uh, a couple drops of orange here. And what if we just kind of tried to I'm trying to make a flower? And so that's the thing about it is, you know, you just, you play around with them, trying to like go around and around to make five petals. And bring that orange out there, getting too much. That one's got four. Yeah, it's not working super well, but maybe if I had something that was a little bit bigger Got a little blue on it. If I can get it off of there. Let's see if that gives us a blue center. And pull a copy of that. See, you can see them coming through already, which is really that's that's kind of fun to watch it just appear through the paper. You can do this on cardstock. If you do it on any cardstock, um, it doesn't normally soak through the paper. It might in a spot here or there, but it doesn't soak through like this and kind of make it double sided. Okay, so this is fun, even if they didn't exactly turn out to be flowers. And the blue that I put in the middle did actually come out in the middle. So that is really. That's quite neat. So see, you can just add your colors wherever you want to add them. And we'll put in some green. Let's see. If you do a green dot, and then take your skewer and go through that green dot, you get like the shape of a leaf. And you could even maybe put, you know, how leaves sometimes have just little kind of spiny bits sticking out. Or, you know, they're not just perfectly round, some of them. We can pull out some of that green. I'm doing it just lightly on top. Whoops. Well, we'll just do those two that way, and we'll leave those that way. And let's kind of see if we can make this like a vine. Now, if you think, I really want to do something like that, but I don't want all those swirls and everything on there, then you can just mix that color into your background and start over with just green in the foreground. Okay. And 
And so there we go. So now we have some leaves. So, you know, it's, it's very fun to just play with this and think of what can I do. So I wonder now what color we'll get if we just mix this together. I should have actually done it. I should have done it like I did that first one and mixed it and taken a pull of that, of it being mixed up, but kind of too late now because the colors are getting too blended. But, and this is different shaving cream, but I have done this before where I have just went away and come back later and, um, and messed with it again. And it, you know, was still kind of here and my shaving cream was still kind of colored. So, and that may all depend on what kind of shaving cream it is. I kind of thought that it would be dissolved by the time I got back and it wasn't. So that really kind of surprised me. Oh, there was one other thing that I want to show you too. All right. Let's stop playing. Plus it's kind of fun to just play in it. It's kind of like finger painting. Get off of there. All right. Spread it out. And see how uh, this really lasts forever until you get a background color that you can't stand. You know, if it just gets too gray or too muddy or whatever. Um, you know, you can just continue using it over and over. You don't need to change. You know, you can mix it up if you don't want the design that's on there to show up and um, just get a solid backing color. And that way also you don't have a, a white backing, which sometimes, you know, I prefer to not have a white backing. Well, there was actually a couple more things I wanted to show you, so I'll combine them. Okay, so let's, that's good enough. So that is, um, with the, with the colors, I need a napkin, hold on. Okay, so I have, I was doing some dyeing of some string and I have my paints left. And these are our paints from this series. So, and this is just, um, you know, we picked up six colors worth of paint and this is just paint and water mixed together. So I just wanted to show you. Now, when you do it with paint, um, it's it very possibly might stick to your your pan a little bit so you'll have to make sure that you wash that off well of course this pan is just for the craft room once you use something in the craft room you don't want to use it other places but let's see how the paint works and i'm sure i've done this before but you know sometimes you think you've done something and you've only thought it so we'll find out and this is going to um this is going to water down because i put water in the paint but without water in the paint i think it would be awfully hard to do um you know because your paint is going to come out in it's acrylic paint it's going to come out very solid but we want to see how this picks up how it takes to the paper so let's oops we have a couple more i don't like um to leave just any of the solid blobs you might want to do that um and i that just bothers me so I kind of want to really fill this out. So I didn't like the way it looked. Okay, we'll call that good. Now let's see how well that comes up on our paper. I figured since I had it here, it would be a good thing to try. And like I said, I think I've done it before, but... Um, this, I think, probably works a little better, although that's water, too. So, yeah. So you can do this with your paints if you don't have the food coloring. 
Well, we'll see. And then we'll see if the paint smears when we take the shaving cream off. Because inks do not. Well, those aren't inks, but dyes. The dyes don't come off. They just dye the paper and then that's it. So there's that. Let's see if it smears. Um, there is paint in the foam that I'm scraping off, but it is, but it did not smear on my paper. So your paints work also. And they don't soak through as much as the dyes do. So by the looks of it, you won't get a double-sided copy. So, and then the last thing that I wanted to show you, and I'm going to just throw a little bit of ink in here. And remember, we made our own stencils. You can take one of your stencils, set it on the foam. Just you don't want to squish that foam really through the stencil. You just want to make that it make sure that the stencil is touching all the way around. And then um, I'm going to do it with a half a sheet of paper because I don't want all that extra around the edge. And I'm just going to put that on there and give that a pat. Right where those circles are. Just, we need to make sure that our paper comes into contact with the foam that is under that stencil. And of course we can tell that by the fact that our paper starts to get a little bit wet in that area. Over here we're not really touching, so I need to kind of press that down a little bit more. And there we go. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, I like that. And again, some of that is paint and it's not, didn't smear on our white paper when we moved it. So paint works well. Isn't that cool? I really like the way that that looks. And actually I like on this one how I did get just a little bit on the ends like that. So. I'm going to set this, leave that set aside. We're going to grab up those papers and see what they look like. I just kind of piled them on top of each other so they're not going to be dry yet. If I had spread them out more, they would be drier because it doesn't take a ton of time for them to dry. So we have our beautiful little circles there. You can do leaves. This one didn't turn out well, so we'll just stick that on the bottom. Swirls, and we can add colors to right where we want them. And a feather. And then look at that beautiful mix. We've got our starfish or stars. Dying of book paper. Marbled paper going one way or marbled paper going two ways two way gives you like this like waterfall effect because you pulled it this way when you pull it this way that's what gives you that effect that looks like that versus this was all just one way and that's more of a feathered effect and then we did it even with paint so i'm gonna pull this one out here because i really really like that one and I really, really like that one. Those are my two favorites right there. So I hope that if you do this, that you have a good time. And we didn't use much spray. We still have a lot that could be done here. And, you know, you can just come up with so many different um, 
different styles and that type of thing, the more you play with it, the more you find, you know, that, oh, I like the way that I do this. And remember, um, make some notes. If you, you know, if you're afraid you're going to forget how you did something or whatever, make some notes so that if you want to go back and recreate it later, you can do that. So it's like, remember, a drop with a line through it coming out the top makes a leaf. And, you know, a feather is a line full of ink and then just go up and then just feather it out. You know, um, you know, make yourself a thing. Don't forget to try stencils because they're really fun, too, if that's, you know, if you like that. And just the plain old ending mix looks really, really pretty. You might just want to do that quite a few times. And when you do this, if you want to take another copy, you can do that quite a few times because that ink is still sitting there. So, um... So there we go. I hope that you enjoyed this week's video. And for next week, we're not actually going to need anything. We're going to need from our stash that we already have our watercolor markers, some spray uh, uh, water um, in a sprayer, which, you know, I just use a, um, this is an old hairspray bottle. We will need a needle and threads. And so since we're not going to actually buy anything this week for next week's project, we're going to take our whole 750 to the um, secondhand store and we're going to buy as much as we can get for 750 so remember um you know really look and check on the prices cuz like my salvation army it, I think it depends on who prices it because you might have something that's almost exactly the same and somebody marked it 59 cents and somebody marked it five dollars so you know look through pick and choose and um we're going to spend 750 on things like fabric, thread, lace, um, you know, anything, buttons, anything that you can get um, that has to do with the sewing realm, okay, from the secondhand store. And even look at like clothing, if, you, if there's some kind of clothing you think is great. And there will be a video showing you what I got with my 750, I believe right after this video. Like I said, I'm trying to get ahead so like I've actually got my videos all a little bit mixed up but um yes I believe after this video there will be a video that shows you what I bought with my 750 and granted your stores may be more expensive and that type of thing but but it's a lot of ideas on you know like don't buy uh big balls of yarn if they've got a bag with a bunch of little balls because you get more colors that way that type of thing so there's some hints and some tips just in the way that I shop at the thrift store. And because we're not going to use that stuff for two weeks, that gives you two weeks if, if you go to town more than once to kind of stop and, and you know, get whatever you can get for a decent price and then maybe save a little bit for the week after if you're going to stop again. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.